Okay. So good evening, everybody. Uh, we are honored to have the presence of our uh, assemblyman, uh, William McNally, tonight. Uh, yeah. We are so happy that he will be able to give us uh, about uh, this afternoon uh, for the conversation and for our questions. Uh, before I start, I would like to read uh, about Mr. McNally, uh, what he has done for the uh, Central New York community, so we'll get a better understanding for his service over the years. Uh, so. Assemblyman uh, McNally has won the first election in 1998, and since then he has been re-elected every two years, so it is quite a successful run all these years uh, serving for our community. Uh, he was, uh, one, of, one of his biggest accomplishments was he was the leader for the Say Yes to Education program, uh, so Mr. McNally has dedicated uh, most of his service and his life uh, to the education for the Central New York area. Uh, he also voted for the $28 billion uh, school aid support for our schools. Uh, he also helped secure $500 million award for the Central New York region uh, through the Upstate Regional Initiative Program. Uh, he is currently serving as the chairman of the New York State Assembly Transportation Committee. Um, uh, Mr. McNally uh, grew up in an uh, Italian family in Syracuse. Uh, he's a proud graduate of the Syracuse University Law School in 1973. He also served in the Army Reserves for six years. Uh, he, uh, he rose to the rank of captain during his service, so we are uh, definitely uh, grateful for his service for our country. Uh, uh, he was married to his love, Karen, uh, for 40 years. Uh, unfortunately, she passed away in 2017, uh, but they raised three ch uh, children and four grandchildren together. Uh, and we are so honored to have uh, Mr. McNally with us. So welcome to our little Turkish community for tonight, Mr. McNally. Oh, thank you very much for inviting me. Absolutely. Uh, so let me also give you a quick information about the CNY Rice Center, uh, that our center uh, members were initially started as a branch of Turkish Cultural Center in uh, downtown Syracuse area about you know, 12 years ago. Uh, later on, we wanted to uh, bring the spectrum more beyond the Turkish community. So we established the CNY Rice Center in the south side of the city. Uh, we purchased an uh, old church building uh, in the south side. And right now it is serving the community in this area. And uh, we are mostly part of the Turkish immigrants uh, doing this volunteer service to our uh, center there. And uh, we are dedicated to uh, education of our youth, uh, educating our community. Uh, and our motto is uh, we rise by lifting others. Uh, we also do a lot of uh, uh, interfaith activities. Uh, so uh, we are right now a new community building in the south side also, and our neighborhood is also actually within the district of Mr. Magnanelli also, uh, so we are happy for that. Uh, so we would like to uh, maybe uh, give a couple minutes to Mr. Magnanelli also to recognize and uh, address our members, and then we'll have a couple more questions for them afterwards. Well, again, thank you very much for having me. Uh, I do appreciate the opportunity uh, to speak with people from the region, from my constituency. Um, you know, I have been in the assembly this, I'm finishing my 22nd year, it's a long time, I know that. Uh, but I've also learned a lot and I've been able to accomplish a lot, I believe, for the people that I, I serve. Um, uh, I want to correct you on one thing. I was married for 47 years, not 40. So oh, I totally apologize it, for that. That was the one I got from your website, years, unfortunately. That's why I remember. But, uh, um, you know, I think, uh, you know, the, the one thing that I have seen with the Turkish community that I've been involved with is that family is important, that culture is important, that obviously education is important. Those are things that I grew up with as well. So we have a lot in common, um, you know, and I'm happy to answer your questions the best I can. And uh, we may agree on everything and we may not, but that's okay. I think that's what this is all about. And uh, 
uh, I do uh, appreciate the opportunity to talk to you, especially during this time of COVID and everybody staying away. This is kind of nice. Absolutely. Thank you so much. It's our honor. And as you have mentioned that uh, family is a cornerstone for our life and our culture. Uh, right. So we have been definitely admiring your leadership in this kind of an effort to support the families. I have read a number of different laws that you uh, voted for to support the family and their uh, insurance and different uh, challenges they have been facing there. And we also know that you have been quite a proud member of the Italian community. And we know that the building the city of Syracuse, the Italians did a lot to build this uh, wonderful city in here. So we like to learn a lot of lessons uh, from them as Turkish community, how we can participate in this area also. Uh, I am myself also uh, married into an Italian family. Uh, they're Costanzos from Cleveland area. So I'm having a first hand experience with all the wonderful uh, Italians in the Cleveland area at the same time. <laughs> Great. Great. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, so uh, one of the questions we want to ask, uh, given the current climate around the country, we are facing a big, huge divide between cultures, races and communities. And uh, how do you see the faith-based organizations, nonprofit organizations, uh, working together with the U.S. government to fight against racism? And unfortunately, the result of it is also the extreme poverty in uh, that Syracuse area is uh, facing. What kind of a plan you can uh, uh, put in front of us that we can help our government also at the same time to heal these wounds in our city? Well, I, I wish I had a plan or the silver bullet, so to speak, that would, uh, um, you know, answer that question emphatically and be able to give you an answer on how to take care of poverty and all of the things that are happening uh, within our community and across the nation, across the world, as a matter of fact. Um, but I don't have that answer, and I don't think anyone does. And I think the real issue here and how we all make this work is first of all, listen. Just sit back and listen and really try to understand what the, the other side, the other person is trying to say. And I think that until we slow down a little bit and maybe COVID has a, a silver lining a little bit in that it makes us slow down and start to listen to what's happening out there. Um, I think that's the way to do it. As far as the federal government is concerned and state government, all the governments are concerned, you know, I think that also there has to be a realization that um, we can't think of ourselves, okay, only. Uh, yes, you have to take care of yourself and you have to take care of your family, but you also have to take care of those that are uh, not able to take care of themselves, let's put it that way, whether they be the elderly the poor, um, you know, uh, people with disabilities, uh, children. I mean, we need to be able to listen to what the needs are and then um, address those needs. And I think that, you know, this mantra that I have heard for the past 20 years of no new taxes, no new taxes, and the rich just seems to get richer and richer and the poor seem to get poorer and poorer I think we're, we're getting pretty close to a breaking point. So I think it behooves the rich and the well-to-do to start thinking about those that don't have as much. And when you talk about things like minimum wage or living wage, you have to listen to that. And I think we have to be more forthcoming and supportive of those things, even if it means a little more tax on this, that, or the other thing. Because to have someone work for less than a living wage, to me, is a form of slavery. It's a form of making people work for less than what they can support themselves and their family on. That, to me, is morally wrong. So I think it's time for people like me, to begin with, to start saying that. And, you know, if you want to vote me out because I'm advocating that we might need more taxes, well, then go ahead and do it. But the bottom line is you're asking me what we have to do, and I'm trying to give you an answer. 
I think we have to listen. We have to start understanding what the plight of our people are, and we have to take care of it. Whatever the cost, we need to take care of that. Uh, it's a moral responsibility. So that's where I am. Thank you so much again. That uh, that was definitely, how can I say, uh, a unique perspective that I haven't heard before that definitely, you know, working and not getting enough paid, this type of a slavery, like you mentioned, is an interesting perspective that maybe it can maybe uh, help us look at from a different uh, vision like that for the whole concert there. So thank you so much again for sharing that. So talking about the similar topic, uh, we also nowadays are facing a big challenge with the uh, pandemic and a lot of uh, people, especially our own members, lost their jobs and uh, they had been um, uh, entrepreneurs and the business owners uh, who had to close down their stores and shops and have been uh, tremendously impacted during this time. Uh, do you see any kind of a, uh, a vision that how we can bring the economy back to speed again and provide some kind of a support or development package we can offer to create more jobs and to help to boost economy for the Syracuse area? Any kind of ideas you might have for this process? Well, there, there's only one place that can really help us at this point in time. Our local governments are going to be bankrupt and they're going to be laying off people the way it is right now. Our state government is at its limits. Already Governor Cuomo has been saying that we're gonna have a 20% cut across the board unless the federal government comes through and supports local governments, businesses, people out of work. If that doesn't happen, there's nowhere else to get the money to do what you're asking. So I believe that right now the ball is in the federal government's court. It has to show leadership. It has to do what needs to be done to get us through this period of time. Uh, some people have called this a war. Well, if it's a war, then the federal government has to lead. And the federal government is the only place that can put money into our economy, help people get back to work, and I think that you know where they should start is number one with the local governments, the state and local governments, and number two with infrastructure projects that will bring immediate jobs and will provide um, immediate um, infrastructure that we have neglected for years and years and which will be around for years and years, almost like uh, Franklin Delano Roosevelt did during the Great Depression, put people to work, build the bridges, build the dams, build the utilities, build the things that we need. Right now, internet is a major problem. A lot of people, you know, we'd say everybody should go to school, but it might have to be online. Well, if 60% yes. of the kids in Syracuse can't get online, we got a problem, okay? Mm -hmm. So we have to build out the system, we have to build out the equipment, these are things that I think, you know, we can focus on where money has to go. And then once you start building part of the economy back up, other things come back. You know, the yes. tourism, the restaurants, apartment stores, every, all the small businesses that have been hurt, they too will come back. And, you know, I'm a very positive kind of guy. I mean, right now things look pretty bad and, 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 and I do sympathize with, anyone who has lost their job. And by the way, my office has been very, very busy with unemployment insurance requests and anything that we can do to help our constituents, please call my office. We will try to take care of everybody. And, uh, uh, but having said that, you know, I do believe that this, the, the only thing I think the president has said that is true is that at some point in time, I don't know how far along it will be, it will end. Okay. It yes. will end, whether it's by a vaccine or it just runs its course, God knows how many years from now, but it will end. And when it does, we will be back. We will be back and the people of the United States will be strong and the people of the world will come back too. Um, I'm positive on that. I'm not negative on that. So I think more than anything else, we have to make sure that people don't lose faith, don't lose hope and that they, they keep working and taking care of themselves and their families as, as best they can. 
and government has to do the same. We have to take care of people now. This is the time. This is why we have government. If you don't have government for a time like this, I don't know when you do. Thank you. And thank you so much again for opening uh, your doors to all our members saying that if they have any kind of an issue about business, economy, uh, their you know jobs and everything that they can come and ask some help from you. Thank you for giving yeah. that offer so they can definitely get that support during these tough times uh, together. Yeah. Uh, and especially we know for the Syracuse economy, uh, the uh, immigrants are uh, are a big part of it. They are the ones who are starting Always jobs. Happen. Always uh, have been a big part of the economy in Syracuse. Always have. Absolutely. And you know, that's, the, that's one of the things that the federal government, to me, is so wrong on. Immigrants have done nothing but make this country stronger. And so, you know, I just don't understand uh, the limits being put on people coming to this country, becoming American citizens. You know, it makes absolutely no sense to me. The, our, the history of our country shows that that's wrong. So, you know, I, I don't know what, I don't know what else to say there. I'm just beside yeah, yeah. myself. Uh, actually, we had another question in the same topic. So I don't know, maybe you might not have more to say, but let me kind of uh, share okay. one of the questions came from our members uh, who said that recently anti-immigrant policies are quite hurting a lot of people in the country including the local institutions, also the legal immigrants in the country. Uh, right now, the federal government reduced the uh, uh, employees of the INS uh, about two th by two third, uh, which will impact all legal immigrants in this country and their visa status working in the US. Uh, and right now, a number of our members in the CMY Rice Center, Turkish immigrant community, number of whom are here working for a company, for you know universities, right. for you know schools with that kind of a visa, and with INS not not functioning, it is kind of a put the, themselves in the jeopardy. So, do you have some kind of again an idea or plan to how we can address that one for? Yeah, our but members? I don't want to be political. I can tell you what you have to do. Everyone, yes. <laughs> an American citizen, better vote in November, and they better vote this guy out. I mean, yes. I don't know what else to tell you. Uh, mm -hmm. That's what democracy is all about. And if he wins again, you're going to get four more years of this and worse. Yes. So the answer is kind of very blatant. Um, if you're if you're concerned about refugee policies and immigration and things like that, well, then he's not your guy. And yes. all I can, you know, I, I don't want to be political on this. I want to give you governmental things. But it just seems so obvious. I can't give you any other answer. Yes, absolutely. Okay. And that is why we are organizing this program called the Meet the Candidate, so our members can hear all these stories. So we, we can do our civil, civil duty to go over there and right. vote and get our voices heard, so we can make the right selection when we are making the voting you at know, the ballots. That, that, by the way, um, the CSE case, which is the case that is the groundwork for schools and school funding in New York State, is one of the best uh, cases I've read in terms of a trial court's decision on the matter. And the trial court, I forgot the judge's name right now, but what he said was, what is the role of the state in education? And the role of the state in education is to make sure that students know how to read. And the reason why that's so important is because that they need to understand the issues of the day and vote. That's what New York State's responsibility is as far yes. as education is concerned. If you don't understand the issues of the day, just voting isn't, isn't good. It's being able to vote and understand why you're voting for a particular person or on a particular issue. That's what's important. So I hope everybody, uh, I, I, I applaud you from, for looking into the background and listening to candidates and things like that. That's the only way to do it. That's yeah. what you have to do. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, so uh, we have also another question uh, regarding uh, unique to the Turkish uh, immigrants uh, in this area that I don't know how much you have been kind of following the politics in Turkey, 
but we have some kind of a, our different version of dictator right now in Turkey, and he's kind of a, uh, putting a stop to the old democratic life in Turkey, and right. uh, he uh, all of a sudden alienated a huge part of the population, pushed them out, and all of a sudden they became terrorists overnight. So it's not really safe right now for a number of our uh, members in this area uh, to go back to Turkey. Some of them are actually uh, seeking for asylum uh, in the U.S. to be able to save their children, save their family, that we have been uh, here to help. Uh, but at the same time, unfortunately, the Turkish government is trying to extradite them back to Turkey so they can put them in jails. And unfortunately, there might be some cases of torture and stuff like that. Uh, we have been trying to raise this uh, awareness in, on this issue in different platforms with different uh, candidates and uh, uh, public officials. Is there any kind of advice you can give and any kind of support you can provide for these families? Right now, they are in the US literally to save their lives so they can stay here. Uh, so uh, how we can help their case to uh, provide their asylums for those uh, people in the area? Oh, I think you're doing what you, what, what you have to do. It's a, federal, it's a federal issue again. It's not a state yes. issue, it's not something you know, I can help you with except to say, I think that what you're doing and trying to educate people about what's going on in Turkey, I think it's pretty clear that, how do you pronounce his name, Egoyan? Uh, Egoyan? Uh, Erdogan, Erdogan, okay. yes. I mean, he's not a nice guy. I mean, it's, it's pretty obvious to anybody who's been watching what's been going on and the tumult that is there in Turkey right now. Um, and Turkey has always been, you know, crucial to the United States, as if, as far as I know, as far as bases are concerned and where it's located, et cetera, et cetera, um, and has always been an ally. So, you know, it's, it, it, uh, it seems to me like he's pushing us away a little bit. So I can't see for myself, you know, the federal government uh, helping him in any way with this asylum issue, uh, you know, trying to um, extradite uh, people here in the United States back back to Turkey. Uh, but you never know with the, the guy who's in office now. I mean, you don't. So you need to keep talking about it and making sure people understand what's going on and, and, and go from there. Absolutely. It is just breaking our heart nowadays because you mentioned that Turkey has been playing a great role between Europe and Asia, East and West, to be able to uh, establish a democracy in that area and still keep the, uh, you know, rule of law in the area. But unfortunately, Erdogan came and just kind of took over everything. Uh, as far as I know, in the uh, Tur Turkey right now has the highest number of journalists in jails, uh, because if you even write something against him tomorrow morning, your newspaper is shut down and all the you know, journalists ended up in jail. And it's just well, that kind of uh, autocracy has been built over there. You would think our federal government would look at that and condemn it. But absolutely, you don't hear that, you know? And yeah. so, you know, just another reason, <laughs> that's all I can tell you, just another yes. reason, okay? There was actually another news that we read that uh, that famous, uh, you know, advisor, uh, Michael Flynn, who has been actually paid by the Turkish government. So you can actually kidnap uh, uh, the Mr. Fethullah Gülen. He is one of the, like a, uh, uh -huh. Uh, inspirer uh, for many of our members as a, a Sufi teacher yeah. and a religious a leader. Uh, he is now uh, literally uh, saving his life in the U.S., uh, but uh, Turkey is trying to bring him back to Turkey as yeah. a terrorist, and they're still going to put him in jail and torture and everything. And they even paid Michael Flynn to literally kidnap him and take it back to Turkey. Uh, but so far, thank God it ha didn't happen. But we are really worried about it, that uh, those kind of uh, people who are promoting peace, harmony and you know mm -hmm. multicultural conversations those people should be safe instead of constantly fearing their for life and everything like that right yeah. um, thank you and uh, i have one more question and then uh, uh, later on we are going to also open a couple more questions before we close to our members right now we have seen close to about 50 people watching on our uh, youtube channel so far so we have a good number of people participating there and uh, uh, one other question is that as a CMY Rice Center, as the you know, immigrant Turkish uh, community, we have been organizing community events. We have been raising awareness for the lead paint poisoning in the area. So uh, especially the South Side families 
who didn't hear about this problem, they can really take uh, uh, initiative and make their home safe for their children. We also have been doing interfaith activities with the Muslims and Christians and Jews and Buddhists in the area. We did uh, weekend uh, classes and uh, education classes, tutoring for our uh, young children in the, our uh, uh, center over there. Uh, we also want to find out what kind of a grant options available for us mm -hmm. so we can kind of uh, explore to see how we can do more for our community, especially in the Syracuse area. Well, unfortunately, right now, there are none, yes. uh, none. From, okay. from a state standpoint. Okay. The yes. uh, every all even the grants that were granted were announced before COVID. Okay. Have been stopped. Okay. okay, because the state government is not borrowing any money except to keep government functions going. And so there isn't any money for any grants or any uh, and anything outside of the ordinary at this point in time. So again, you know, I would look uh, to grants that come out of the federal government, maybe to try to help us get out of uh, the pandemic era, uh, era that we're in. Um, and also, you know, when things open up, I think that the, the Regional Economic Development uh, Corporation, the REDC, is the place for you to start on a state level. Any grants that are available would be uh, made available through that entity uh, for economic development purposes. Uh, if you're looking for grants for, for housing or for, our, for medical or for education, you know, then you've got to go through the different parts of the government uh, uh, for those things as well. But for the most part, if you're looking for grants, you know, for an agency that's working with people on the South Side, especially lead paint and things like that, I, I would think the REDC, the Regional Economic Development corporation would be the place to start anyway. Thank you. I just take a note on that one. Uh, so we can definitely follow up those options for the- I, I'm not options. sure there's anything available right now, unfortunately. Yes. <laughs> um, so before I open one couple, maybe final questions from our uh, uh, participants. Actually, we have right now about 56 people joining our conversation. So thank you again right. for all our members being there. Thank you uh, for joining. If, if people like to support your campaign, uh, what are the avenues for them uh, that if you can kind of uh, let them know because right now a number who maybe are for the first time they're going to be voting this year because they have been recently became citizens or they haven't voted before so what how if they want to support you after everything you share with them how they can support for your campaign well they can go on 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 facebook or on my new york state assembly website you know just okay. put in William magnarelli assemblyman you know you'll find it and uh, there's a number of different places and that will lead you to different things. Uh, well, first of all, it'll tell you about what I've been doing, where I've been, you know, recently and in the past. And it would also give you places where obviously contributions are always necessary when, uh, when you're running for office. And because of COVID, you know, we're, we're not out there knocking on doors the way we used to be. And, yes. Uh, if anybody wants a, a lawn sign or something, uh, communicate on Facebook and we'll make sure we can get you a lawn sign to put up or something like that. But I would say check Facebook and my New York State Assembly website um, and go from there. Thank you. Again, we'll be listening from the different candidates and hear their side of stories and everything. And if any of our members like what you said so far, we encourage them to make you know, support for your campaign, maybe grab a uh, yard sign and visit your website. If they're yeah, interested, just, we can share hey, with them. I like talking to you on Facebook. That would be fine. I mean, just let me know. Mm -hmm. And the things that you don't like or the things that you question, that, that's okay to give me a call on that too. Yes. And uh, so uh, we have a couple minutes left, uh, but before we go, uh, is there uh, any uh, specific member of ours who like to share uh, maybe one or uh, two comment or uh, maybe a question with our guests tonight so I can unmute them and they can maybe share their comment with, with us together. Anybody would if like I to can, go? I may, I would love to. 
Absolutely, Mr. Hayali, welcome. Yeah. Uh, come yeah. on in. <laughs> so, Assemblyman Magnarelli, thank you so much. It's a really honor to see you. On, 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 I have always seen you in the community, and, and this community means a lot to you, and you mean a lot to our community. When I say our community, I mean the whole Syracuse, even greater Syracuse. And, and this was really a great honor. And I know how much you care about all the children and, and everyone else. I just wanted to thank you and for your participation and, and, and acknowledgement for all those issues. We truly understand how important it is right now to stand together as a united because we are really proud American citizens. And we have seen how, how Italian Americans make this country even greater when they came over. And we want to be the same. We want to follow the same path as they did and as, as Irish people did, as, as Jewish, as everybody else, because this is what makes America so unique and different. And thank you again for joining us and hope to see you again face to face. We truly appreciate you yeah. and your contribution to all of our children, all of our citizens. And thank you. We are with you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Uh, and I believe you know Mr. Hayali uh, from his daytime work that uh, he's the superintendent for the charter schools, oh, yeah. uh, Academy of Science. So he's one of oh, our yeah. members at the center also. Uh, that uh, I know you're part of a great support for the education, everything they do for the children, for the education system, for the charter schools also at the same time. Okay. Uh, any other comments or questions before we close for tonight? I, I just want to thank... Uh... Magnella for taking time and, 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 and spending time with us and answering our questions sure. and, and, and hoping that uh, wishing him a good luck in the next election. And then uh, I should tell that Dr. Hayali is a really good uh, a walking advertisement for him because whenever we talk about politics, he always mentions his name oh, in a positive you. way. Thank you. <laughs> tell him thank you. <laughs> thank you. Um, so uh, before we close tonight, again, we'd like to thank everybody who participated uh, for our wonderful conversation. We had about uh, 50 or 60 people uh, join for the Zoom conversation, uh, listen to the questions and answers. And I just actually just shared the website uh, for uh, uh, Assemblyman Magnelli's uh, website. It is magnelli.com. So at that website, you can see all the policies that he's bringing front. And there's a donate bo uh, box there and the contacts uh, link there available. Uh, so any of whom would like to participate, they are welcome to do that. And uh, as the uh, American citizens, it is our uh, civic duty to get educated about our local concerns and then vote intelligently so we know what we are voting for and get our voice okay. raised there. And uh, we'd like to say thank you again for our guest tonight, You're Mr. McNally, sharing his ideas. Right now, fortunately, because of the COVID-19, our center is not really open. It's closed to the public. Uh, but we would love to have you over there for in the future when we are back to normal for one of our activities. And we would like to serve you some Turkish dinner or something like that. It will be fun to have you over there <laughs> so together. I've been, to, I've been to one. It's very good. <laughs> yeah, so, uh, thank you. Thank you. I uh, uh, appreciate it again. Uh, it was lovely to talk to you. Good luck with your election. And uh, you have our contact. If any questions, please let us know. And we'll be uh, definitely be there uh, uh, do, uh, doing what we can do for our community. And thank you for joining tonight. Thank you. Bye-bye now. Bye. Good night.